All right, everyone, how we doing today? My name is Bill. Oh, you're on my, you're, you're muted, Emily. <laughs> I'm muted. All right. Hi, I'm Emily. <laughs> <laughs> and we are Be Fast Running. And we are on our final topic of the Be Fast Beginners Run Week, where we are going to go ahead and talk about our final topic that we're excited to talk about. So just to recap, you know, what we've talked about in our previous videos, we talked about how to create a plan, how to figure out a plan for your running journey. Then we talked about gear up to go ahead and figure out what apparel, footwear, accessories, all the things you need to go ahead and help assist you on your running journey. Then we talked about all the ways and resources that you can go ahead and track your data as a runner to go ahead and make sure that you're understanding how you're performing and how you can go ahead and report it to yourself to see how things are going. Then yesterday we talked about mental health and the relationship you know with running that that has and how important it is to go ahead and make you a complete person because you know just it isn't just a body game it's definitely all about you know the mind as well some people like to say it's 100% mental and 100% physical and with that too we're going to go ahead and talk about the physical aspects of that today and then we're going to go ahead and be talking about muscle maintenance but before we do that as you know we've been doing all week we want to go ahead and give our thanks and um, you know praise for our local community stores that have decided to go ahead and support us through these efforts this week and not only are they supporting us, but they're supporting the communities that we belong to as well. And that's The Running Place over in Newtown Square, Scranton Running Company in Scranton, Pennsylvania, The Bryn Mawr Running Company with four locations, one in Bryn Mawr, one in Media, one in Westchester, and then their Emmaus Run-In location in Emmaus, Pennsylvania. And then there's Philadelphia Runner with five locations, one in Center City, one in University City, one in Glen Mills, one in Maniunk, and one in the King of Prussia Mall. So we really appreciate the support from those guys and uh you know being able to shout out our event through the week but back to muscle maintenance you know talking about you know the physicalness of this sport running is such an important part to get off you know and going but what are we doing when we're not running you know like you know, are we doing anything else or are we just doing our, our run and calling it a day and this talk aims to go ahead and talk about the things that we can do to go ahead and support your body outside of the run. And um, coming again from Emily with her background as a licensed physical therapist, um, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and hand it off to her. So Emily, let's go. All right, thanks, Bill. So specifically what I wanna talk today about is uh, the importance of strength training for runners. So I think this is uh, something that a lot of runners kind of neglect in their training for various reasons, one being that it's time consuming. Most runners want to run because that's what they really like to do. So adding in another workout in their week, a couple times that isn't running, um, that, you know, that that's, that's tough. And also I think, um, maybe some runners don't necessarily see the benefits that that strength training can give to them, um, in their running. So basically what I want to do today is just lay out the, the benefits of strength training um, and try to convince you to start incorporating it into your routine. So to kind of frame this talk, I want to talk about um, three major benefits of strength training. The first has to do with performance. So you're running performance. The second has to do with injury prevention. And the third has to do with general health and fitness. So starting with performance, if you think about running, it's basically a repetitive low level plyometric activity requiring your leg muscles to repeatedly generate force to propel you forward. So if you want to run faster, you're going to need the ability to rapidly and efficiently recruit more muscle mass to generate more force. And strength training is one tool to achieve this. So not only does strength training increase the amount of absolute force a runner can produce, but it also improves neuromuscular recruitment. And perhaps most importantly, running economy, which is basically a measure of how much energy you are using at a given pace. So for, you know, of course, if you need less energy to maintain like a seven minute mile, that's a good thing. Um, it's going to improve your performance when you get into a race. So those are sort of the main performance benefits of strength training. There's a lot of good research to, to back this up. Um, and if, so if you're, a, if you're a, a runner who really cares about performance, then this is my argument for why you should include strength training into your routine. Um, it's really, it, it, you'll get a lot of bang for your buck out of it, especially if you haven't really done it before. And this is adding a new stimulus into your routine. So that's number one. Number two, injury prevention, which I think maybe some people are, are a little bit more aware of. Um, 
you know, most running injuries are due to overuse, meaning doing too much too soon, um, putting too much demand on your muscles, your tendons, your bones before they're able to handle that demand. So making sure that you're gradually increasing the volume and intensity of your running and including, you know, proper recovery when you need it. That's the number one thing you can do to prevent injury in running. But that being said, strength training can also help to build the capacity of your tissues, your muscles, your bones, your tendons, and improve your overall resiliency. So that can also help to, to reduce your risk of injury. So it's important not to just neglect it in your training from that perspective as well. So we got performance, we got injury prevention. The third thing I want to highlight is just that um, strength training is also an important part of just maintaining general health and fitness. So um, the American College of Sports Medicine recommends that all adults perform strength training at a minimum of two days per week, targeting all the major muscle groups. So a full body workout um, to maintain muscle, bone and joint health. And I think this becomes increasingly important as we age. Um, one thing that we're all probably aware of and not happy about is that as we age, our metabolism naturally slows somewhat. Um, but if you are able to add lean, lean muscle mass through strength training, that can improve your body composition and allow you to burn more calories to kind of offset that natural slowing. So that's another benefit that you might get. And a final thing I want to say is that um, from, from my perspective as a PT, I see this a lot in sort of older adults is that maintaining uh, muscular strength really helps ensure that you maintain your functional mobility and your independence, um, meaning that you're able to do everyday, everyday things like, you know, getting up from a chair, um, carrying heavy groceries to your house, getting up from the floor, things like that, that we take for granted, but, um, those are absolutely really critical parts of, of like being an independent adult. So as you get older, I think it's really important to make sure that you're staying fit through strength training and aerobic exercise too. But as runners, we're probably already covering that in our, in our routines. So those are kind of like the main benefits of strength training that I see. Absolutely. Yeah. These are all great things that, you know, I, myself as a runner have been able to pursue at some times and, um, you know, have done like all of this to the vein of, you know, being able to make sure that my performance is, you know, over at its peak it's to make sure that I'm able to, you know, run healthy injury free. And of course for my general health too, because there's, uh, you know, so much, you know, going on, I just want to feel strong the whole time and just feel, be able to go ahead and do great things. But, um, it's not without, you know, the hard work that you need to go ahead and put in. So let's, um, you know, maybe talk about, uh, you know, what work, you know, we can start doing and, uh, see if it's manageable or not in our schedules. Yeah, for sure. So, talking like more practically okay so you decided you want to start incorporating some strength training what what exactly is that going to look like what should you do so in terms of the muscle groups that you're going to want to focus on as a runner you know obviously running uh places huge demands on your legs so um you're going to want to prioritize the muscles of your lower body and your core as well um meaning like your abdominal muscles your lower back so full body strength training, incorporating your, your upper body as well is super important for general health, as I just said, but for this talk, we're just going to focus on like a runner specific routine, which is going to be that lower body and core. So this means you're going to want to hit your, your calf complex. So your gastroc, nemeus, and your soleus, the quads and the hamstrings, uh, the hips, glutes, back extensors, abs, like I just said, um, and that, that's kind of what, what you're going to want to focus on. So we have this graphic pulled up, you know, you just talked about, you know, which exercises to emphasize. Um, but we got over here, you know, the when, how much, and uh, how heavy too that we're showing over here. So, yeah. So um, this is kind of just a, a, some general principles to help you guide your exercise selection when you're making up your routine. And that we'll show you a, a sample routine at the end as well but you can use these principles to put together your own routine. There's not like one single routine that I'm going to say you have to do. That's the best one. You should find exercises you like to do that you can do with the equipment you have available to you. So these are just general recommendations, but 
Uh, speaking generally, like I see two main mistakes that runners make when they are strength training. The first one is that they sometimes tend to like make their lifting into more of a like cardio workout with like a circuit style type of workout where they're not lifting a lot of weight. They're using really, really low, you know, small rest periods in between exercises, maybe going from like one station to another to another. So it's more of a cardio workout than anything. And um, that's great, but we're already running a lot. We're, we're runners, right? So we're getting a lot of aerobic exercise already. So these workouts aren't really serving the purpose that we want them to serve. We want to be building strength and this is really not going to accomplish that. Um, in a similar vein, the second mistake I sometimes see is, um, basically people taking kind of an old school approach to, to lifting for runners by using like low, really low weight and high reps. Um, and that type of training is more geared toward building muscular endurance and not muscular strength. So as runners, we're already getting a lot of muscular endurance work through our, the repetitive motion of running. Um, so if our goal is to improve force production, force generation, we need to improve strength, which means kind of ditching the low, the low weight, high rep scheme and moving onto like a heavier weight, like heavier, lower, lower reps, higher weight. Um, so that's kind of like the main point that I want to get across here. I don't want to overcomplicate it. Um, because this is like, I, I just want to give sort of like a simple routine that you can get started with. So a good starting point is to aim to do say, let's say two to four reps or sorry, two to four sets of between five and 10 reps, um, at an effort level, like an RPE of somewhere around a seven to eight out of 10. So this is going to be, you know, at least 70% of your one RM, which would be like the maximal amount that you could lift one time. Um, so you should feel like you can do maybe one or two more reps at the end of a set and that's it. In other words, it should be pretty fatiguing. Like if you can finish three sets of 10 and feel like you could do another three sets of 10, no problem. You need to increase the weight. That's the number one thing I want to say. I think a, a lot of people under, under load when they're lifting as runners. So I think the first thing to, to focus on is making sure that you are lifting an appropriate amount of weight. And like, it's totally fine if you want to start at a lower weight when you're learning the movement so you can get your form down and sort of like understand what it is that you're trying to accomplish. But once you feel like your form is pretty good and you understand the movement, you want to make sure that you're lifting enough weight. So that's kind of the first thing I wanted to emphasize. Um, so that's how many sets, how many reps, right? Um, the next thing I want to say is that you want to try to do this, like we'll say two times a week to start and probably try to leave at least 48 hours in between workouts so that you give your muscles time to recover. So in other words, don't do them on back to back days. So at least two days apart, two days a week. If you're doing like a higher mileage running program and incorporating like speed work, harder workouts, my recommendation would be to lift on the days that you do your hard workouts. So that way you're, you're keeping your hard days hard you're, and you're letting your easy days be easy. So you're really getting to recover in between your hard workouts. Um, otherwise, if you're running lower mileage, you're not really worried about speed work or anything like that. I would just say, try to fit it in wherever you can in your schedule. Um, just making sure that you leave two days in between lifting sessions. And if you're going to do, if you're going to run and lift on the same day, since running is our sport, running is our primary sport, it's our focus, I would say get your run in first and lift after. Um, just because your legs can get kind of trashed from from lifting and you know, you want to be able to to get your run in with good form um, and like minimal fatigue. So um, that's my other recommendation. So we've got two times a week, two to four sets of five to 10 reps. Um, as far as the specific exercises go, I usually suggest focusing on like the compound movements, like using multiple joints. So things like squats, deadlifts, lunges, rather than like isolation exercises. Um, since with running, you have to coordinate multiple joints at once to move yourself forward. So it's just more specific. It's more, um, it, it just is, uh, 
yeah, it's more specific. So, so uh, we, <laughs> we have we have a lot going on. So just to go, I know I'm, I'm uh like yeah, I'm spitting out a lot of information. It's very good. So just to go ahead and recap a lot of it, you know, that was going on there. And obviously, yes. if you're watching this recording, you can go ahead and you know scrub back and listen to everything in that order. But a lot of um, you know, what Emily mentioned, you know, seemed to be from the breakdown that we have over here, uh, you know, the graphic that you're seeing. But to kind of put things into like lay terms, um, I think one of the most important things that you suggested was about how to do this strength training and treat it like a strength workout and not do it like similar to like the runs we're already doing. And I would compare that to almost like, you know, eating a meal. You want to go ahead and balance out your diet. Like, you know, I compare running to like, you know, eating carbs and, you know, it just so happens that carbs are probably the best fuel for your running. And I consider the uh, weightlifting um, to be like eating um, the, the protein over in your meal. Like, you know, you have, uh, you know, uh, I know that that's not in your diet, but, you know, for, for me, I would have maybe some, um, you know, rice or pasta, you know, for the carbs. And then the other side of it, of the meal would be, you know, like a steak or some kind of like meat to go ahead and, you know, digest and stuff. And, um, when you look at it, those are two, you know, completely different kinds of foods, you know, that you're digesting. So make sure that you understand those like stark differences. Um, when you're doing the, um, the weights and stuff like that, you know, you don't want to go ahead and, um, do it, you know, so it's uh, really like, easy just like this running you know you're putting like uh, an alternate sh alternate strain on your body to introduce you know a new kind of discipline a new kind of stress that is different from the running that you're actually doing so that's kind of the yeah. recap that was going on in my brain does that sound about right yeah no that's great and i i actually i like that um i like the way that you put that with the analogy to food and trying to build a complete meal mm -hmm. so yeah, thank you for kind of like simplifying all that. <laughs> yeah, no, you're. We know how how much information you know uh, we can share like about this stuff, and um, you know, for any runners interested in this stuff, of course, you know, as Emily was saying, like you know, all the stuff we're sharing is you know free knowledge. You've heard it just now. We can go super deep, and you know, we offer you know personalized coaching plans and the ability to work with us. You know, with our website down below, bfastrunning.com. You know, if you want to go and check it out, but. We do have some, you know, uh, graphics with you know, a lot of these exercises that we want to go ahead and like run through because you do have over here that you have, um, you know, start with, you know, two times, you know, a week and stuff. Um, so I think we have like, you know, two separate plans. Um, you know, we, do we want to go ahead and run through those exercises to go show everybody now to go ahead and yeah, start to wrap things for up? Sure. For sure. So um, I have just come up with like exactly like an example routine you could use so there's a, a day one routine and then a day two so say you did this on like a monday and then on a thursday or something like that so these exercises are primarily as i said like compound multi-joint exercises there's also a lot of single leg stuff in here because in running we're on one leg all the time so it makes sense to include single leg exercises um and they're all pretty much like you know, done with free weights, um, in like a, a standing, most of them are in a standing position, um, versus like a seated, um, like machine exercise, because it's going to be a little more specific to the task of running. And also it's going to place a greater stabilization demand on your body, which I think is helpful. So day one, we've got goblet squats. You could really do any squat variation, but I like goblet squats, especially for beginners. Um, We've got single leg deadlifts. We've got single leg bridge, single leg calf raises. I like the single leg stuff. And then some side planks. So just five exercises. It doesn't really take that long. You can, you can definitely pound this out in about 30 minutes. Um, and that'll be your first workout of the week. Yeah, and you guys just saw all the graphics that you can go ahead and scrub through there in the video. Yeah, I'm gonna make some. I'm gonna make some videos of these as well. So check out, watch out for those on our Instagram. Um, but for now, we'll just kind of go go over them quickly. But the day two series of exercises, gonna use slightly different ones. Um, just kind of keep things interesting. So we'll start with the split squat, the deadlift. I think this picture shows it with with dumbbells. Just, just I mean, you can use barbell as well or. Uh, or a hex, whatever, but I'm just trying to think like more people have dumbbells at home than a bar probably. So, um, and most of us probably aren't going to the gym right now, unfortunately. So 
you know, it's just a little bit easier. Um, and then step ups and soleus wall sit. Soleus, soleus being the other, the other calf muscle besides the gastroc um, and just uh, regular planks. So we did side so, yeah. planks for the first, uh, you know, part of the week and then, you know, yeah. targeting core in a different way here. Exactly. So just five exercises each day. Again, you should probably be able to get this done in about 30 minutes. Um, nothing crazy, but I think it will pay, you know, big dividends for your running and also just for your general health. So definitely worth giving it a shot if you don't already. Absolutely. So, you know, it's pretty quick to go ahead and breeze through those exercises, you know, believe it or not. Yeah. So I, or it's quick to go ahead and breeze through those exercises. Um, they, they, it is, it does, I believe it does seem like a lot, Emily, but really like, you know, if you go ahead and you know go through and do it, I think you'd be happier that you did. And as we've talked about with other things during this week, uh, you're really in the business right now for creating a routine, healthy habits for yourself. And this is just like another thing and why a lot of runners fall off and not, you know, keep this in the routine is because they don't understand, you know, the importance. They don't have anybody telling them that and they don't see enough people in their circles doing this because it's just like all about the run. No one talks about their secondary workouts that they're doing. It's not really the sexy part of the sport necessarily, but it is quite mm -hmm. important and stuff behind the scenes that make your performance even better as we have over here. Performance, injury prevention and general health, right? Those are the main themes of why we shared all this. Absolutely. I mean, if you look at any, if you look at anyone fast, if you look at any, you know, you know, collegiate runners or any, you know, professional runners, elite runners, they all lift. That's a big part of their training. So there are no weak, fast runners. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, um, I will get to our final thoughts if you have any to share, Emily, but you know, want to go ahead and finally shout out our stores one last time. Uh, the Running Place in Newtown Square, Scranton Running Company in Scranton, Pennsylvania. All of the Bryn Mawr locations, Bryn Mawr, Media, Westchester, and the Emmaus Running in Emmaus, Pennsylvania. And all of the Philadelphia Runner locations in Center City, University City, Maniunk Glen Mills, and the King of Prussia Mall. So a lot of great locations. Um, we'll be in contact you know, with the people during this week who participated in the Be Fast Beginners Run with being able to get out prizes to everybody in their different locations. Um, you know, The big reveal was that we want to go ahead and try to get out as many gifts as possible to everybody that was able to go ahead and sign up. So we appreciate your support. But with that, Emily, um, your final thoughts about muscle maintenance. I pretty much said everything I need to say tonight. It's a big topic again, so it's, I know I kind of like sped through a lot of information, um, but you know, reach out if you guys have any questions, we're happy to, to help. So, and again, yeah, thank, thank you to everyone who's participated in this event and to everyone who's, who's watching. We really appreciate it. So that's it for well, what we have going on for our video series. We hope to go ahead and put out more on twitch.tv uh, as well as Instagram and YouTube using all the platforms to create free community resources to go ahead and support the running community. Thank you for your time. Um, we look to go ahead and you know support our community with more free events in the future from Be Fast Running while linking up with the rest of our supporting stores. So thank you for this fantastic week and see you guys for your next run. See ya. See ya.